Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Good day to all of us. Ako po si Debra Garcia and welcome to another series of Filipino lessons where you will learn not just the theories and form of the language but also the function and the usage. So grab your pen and paper and let us learn all about conversational Filipino. Before you watch this lesson, please make sure that you've already watched the previous series. There are 18 lessons in it. I put the link of the first lesson in the description box below because in that series, I discussed all the theories of the Filipino language from the very basic to the advanced level. In this series, we will no longer convert sentences from formal written Filipino to conversational Filipino, but instead, we are just going to do pure conversational or spoken Filipino. On the board, our list of the verbs that we need to be familiar with when we are talking about first thing that we do in the morning. So, the first one is brush, or in Filipino, it's sipilio. Actually, in Filipino, we don't, we don't just say sipilio because sipilio is the brush itself. We usually put mag, a prefix mag, so that this one will become a verb. So it, we would say mag sipilio. It's the imperative form of the verb. The second one is eat. In Filipino, kain. Flush, buhos. Get dressed, bihis. Get up, bangon. Go into paso. Um, in Filipino, we are not very specific with our prepositions. So instead of saying go into, we also say like get in or go inside. They are all the same. We have one um, equivalent for that. That's paso. Okay, go out. Labas. Make. Gawa. Shave. Ahi. Um, take a bath is ligo. We use take a bath, okay? Because when we say take a shower, it's very specific. Majority of the houses in the Philippines, especially for the ordinary people, we don't use shower. We use a faucet, which is gripo, and then we use the bucket and the um, dipper. So we, we take a bath like this, not shower, okay? So we don't say take a shower now. We just say take a bath, ligo. Okay, use is gami, make, sorry, wake up, it's gising, and wash, hugas. Now, if you look at the picture here, um, there are sentences for each picture, and all of them, all of the sentences, use the present form of the verb. These verbs here are in their um, base form, or these are the root verb. Now, to convert them into their tenses, you need to conjugate them. That's why I really suggest that you watch the previous series, because there I discussed how to conjugate the verbs according to their group, according to their affixes. So, in here, we are just going to convert these verbs into their present form so that we can translate those sentences. Okay, so I copied those sentences from the picture. I transferred them here so that you can see them better. And then let us translate them in conversational Filipino. In the previous series, what we did was we always translate them into formal Filipino first because that is the structure in English, but then for this series, let us go directly into spoken or conversational Filipino. Let's start with the first sentence. This one is very easy to translate, though for reading the time, since it's a number, we usually use English or Spanish. Very seldom that we use the Filipino or the Tagalog name for numbers. So this seven here, could we could say seven or we use siete. The Spanish for number seven is siete. And also when we tell time and we use the Spanish um, number, then we also use the Spanish indicator of time. This word, siete. So this is the number seven. Alas is from the Spanish language to tell time. So, alas siete 
na. We, we put na, it means already or yeah. So it's seven in Filipino, conversational Filipino, we just say alas siete na. Number two, Dan wakes up. Now, we need to identify in sentences like, like this one, we need to identify the verb and the subject. Why? Because in English, we follow the SVO form, subject, verb, object. Um, it's the same in, in formal Filipino. In written Filipino, we follow the same pattern. However, as I discussed in the previous series, for conversational Filipino, we start with a verb first. So instead of um, SVO pattern, we use a VSO. So in this sentence, Dan wakes up. Our verb is wakes, right? It's in the present form. In Filipino, wake, um, the verb earlier that I listed, wake means um, gising, wakes up, gising. So we will use the verb gising for this one. And then the subject is Dan. So in converting this into conversational Filipino, we will start with the verb. So we will use the present form. We will say, Gumigising si Dan. See, our verb is in here and the subject is in here. So in English, when you start with a verb, it would sound like wakes up Dan. It's actually Dan wakes up. Um, in conjugating this verb, we use the the infix um, and then this one g i g i s i n g g g sing is actually the future form of the verb g sing. This is our root verb here, g sing. Okay, when you want to learn more about verb conjugation, please watch the previous series. All right, number three, he gets up. So it's the same, our verb is in here. Subject is he. He in Filipino is siya. I discussed that in the previous series as well. Siya, or we can pronounce it as sha. So we'll start with our verb, gets up. Uh, what is that again? Bangon, okay? So we are going to conjugate this one into the present form. So we'll start with bumabangon si oh sha sha or siya we you can put i here as well bumabangon siya but in conversational filipino we don't really pronounce it siya we say sha bumabangon sha this verb is also the same with this verb here we use the um as an infix to form the present form the root verb is bangon and then we form the future as ba bangon and then we inserted the um here it becomes a present tense so buma bangon sha this one it's a bit longer so he goes into the bathroom goes into is a uh, pasok right i said earlier it's pasok he goes into the bathroom. Then we'll start with goes into. We would say puma paso. Puma paso sha sa. This is our preposition here. And then the bathroom. In the Philippines, we we are not very specific with bathroom, toilet, um, restroom they're all the same so bathroom here is also the washroom or we could even say toilet but we will use in the philippines the most commonly used term for bathroom is cr cr means comfort room we refer it as cr um also if it's really just a bathroom it means there's no toilet we we can call it banyo Banyo, it spells like this. Banyo or bathroom. So we can say, Uma pasok siya sa, let's just use this one, banyo. We'll use banyo because the sentence is very specific, uh, bathroom, okay? It didn't say washroom or toilet, 
So we'll use banyo. Pumapasok siya sa banyo. See, it has the same conjugation pattern. We still use the infix um. Our root verb is paso, goes into, and that's paso. So it will become pumapasok siya sa banyo. Number five, there are two sentences here. So it says, Dan uses the toilet. This one now is a toilet. Okay, so our verb is uses gamit. Okay, use gamit. So we will start with a verb when we want to translate this. Um, gamit. Let's see. It will become gumagamit. And we did not use sha here. There's a name. So gumagamit si dan. We need to we need to use the personal topic maker C. Si. Gumagamit si dan nang. It's funny because toilet, as I said earlier, toilet, bathroom, washroom, it's the same in the Philippines. But in this sentence, toilet here is the toilet bowl, right? So we are just going to use the exact translation of the toilet, though we don't say that in Filipino. But the exact translation of this one, Dan uses the toilet, would be gumagamit si Dan na inidoro. Inidoro. The inidoro is the uh, toilet bowl. Okay? Uh, the second sentence is, then he flushes it. So that's why I said it's very specific because the second sentence is he flushes it. So it's really the toilet bowl. We will start with then. So it's tapos. When we see then, it's tapos in Filipino. Tapos um, flushes. Binubuhusan. Binubuhusan. This this, uh, I did not discuss this kind of conjugation in the previous series because um, most of the verbs that I discussed there are actor-focused verb. This one is an object focus. The object, like if you translate that in Filipino, the one that you are flushing or the one that's receiving the action flushes is the toilet. So now it, the conjugation became complicated. So, binubuhusan, um, he is, is done, right? But we just say niya. It is the, is the toilet. So, we say, tapos binubuhusan niya ito. Ito is not really it. It's not the translation. Ito in Filipino means this. So it's like saying, then flushes he this. That's the exact like word-for-word uh, -word translation in English. Tapos is then. Binobuhusan is flushes. Nia is he. And then ito is this. So we say, then flushes he this. Okay, it's complicated. I don't want to... to um, discuss so much about this because it will confuse you. We will just uh, we will just focus on the simple present um, form of the sentences. The last one, he washes his hands. Our verb is washes. It's in the present form as well. So we are going to start with our verb hands in um, in Tagalog or in Filipino is tamay. Actually, this is plural, so we say mga kamay. This plural indicator, plural maker. So mga, when we add mga in the nouns, then we they would become plural. But this one, we will just use kamay. Okay, we will translate this like this. So we'll start with the verb first. First, um, naghuhugas. Uh, and then um, he. So we will still use the pronoun he or sha. Naguhugas sha ng kamay. Okay, and also I already discussed this. 
for he or she, we just use sha. We don't have the male and female for this kind of pronoun. So we just use sha or siya. Naghuhugas siya ng kamay. This verb is different from these three here because these are um verbs. This one is actually a mag verb. We call it mag. This is the prefix mag. But we see this prefix in the future tense of the verb. So future is maghuhugas. But when it becomes present tense, then we change mag to nag. And then we repeat the first syllable of the root verb hugas. Our root verb is hugas. We repeat that. Then the, the present form is naghuhugas siya ng kamay. Now let's practice converting sentences from English to Filipino using the nouns and adjectives. Earlier, it's all nouns and verbs, right? So right now, I'm going to give you enough time to think about this. Um, noun plus adjective sentences are easier to, to translate in Filipino because you don't have to conjugate the adjectives, not unless you are talking about the degrees of adjectives. But this one, we are just going to use the base form of the adjective. I'll give you an example. Let's say, uh, let's use the noun towel. So, towel. Towel is, in Filipino is tuwalia. Tuwalia. Now, let's find an adjective for tuwalia. Tuwalia may be um soft okay soft soft in filipino is malambon now if our english sentence is that towel is soft the towel is soft now towel is our subject is is our verb and soft is our adjectives adjective okay s v a now to translate this into conversational filipino you will start with the adjective malambot so you'll start with malambot malambot what is malambot the towel right so you say the towel ang ang tuwalya that's how it is in Filipino. Malambot ang tuwalya. So it means um, soft the towel. Soft the towel. Malambot ang tuwalya. Okay, now I am going to give you some adjectives for these nouns here. Let's start with the banyo. The banyo is the bathroom. What can we say about the bathroom? Maybe the bathroom is clean so the bathroom is clean clean is malinis there malinis how about the alarm clock or the reloj or the orasan when you make your sentence you can choose one of these um terms here you can use alarm clock reloj or orasan so alarm clock let's say an um, alarm clock the alarm clock is mm, new new is bago so alarm clock new bago breakfast breakfast is al okay the almusal almusal is maybe delicious masara okay delicious masara how about the hands or the kamay? The kamay is um the kamay is fragrant. Maybe because you just washed it, so it's fragrant. Mabango. Mabango. Okay, shower. The shower is broken. Sira. Okay, now if you are going to 
Write these sentences first in English, like in this format, SVA. So you'd say, the bathroom is clean. Number two, the alarm clock is new. The breakfast is delicious. The hands are fragrant. Or they smell good. The shower is broken. Sira. So if you write them in this pattern, and then when you translate them in Filipino, you write them in this pattern. You will start with the adjective and you end with the subject. No more verbs. So SVA will become AS in conversational Filipino. I'll give you time for that. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something. Please watch out for the next videos. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. So see you again next week. Bye!